Let me first explain how I set up the lightning, so the theory behind it. And if I were to drop down a box here, I will use this box as an example. So most of the effects of the lightning will be, and I will show this uh, better if I just uh, make a couple of keyframes here. So I will maybe start from a value of zero for uniform scale. I will hold down Alt and add the keyframe. Let's go forward maybe 30 frames and let's set this maybe to a value of five. So if I press shift click on this value, we can go to our graph and most of the settings for the lightning will have a curve that looks something like this. So we want a fast start and if I play the animation, we have this fast sharp start and then it slowly settles over time until it reaches a sort of like a standstill. So this curve is pretty much the basis for all of the lightning settings. So instead of using keyframes, what I could do is if I drop down an add node and create a single point, let's create a point and from here I want to drop down an attribute wrangle. Let's create an attribute amp for amplitude and let's set this amp value to be equal to our frame value. So if I look in my geometry spreadsheet, now we have a value that increments every frame. And let's actually just make this frame value start at zero. So I will set the uh, amp is equal to frame uh, minus one. So at first, at the first frame, it starts at zero and then it keeps incrementing one unit per frame and go back to our scene view. So this can become set amp. And from here, I can drop down another attribute wrangle and let's set the P scale to be this amp value that we created. So at P scale equals amp. And now if I go to my box and let's delete all animation, set the uniform scale back to one and let's drop a copy to points and use this point as our target. Let's preview this. And we can see now that we have a box that keeps incrementing each frame because the P scale is linked to this amp value. So at frame five, it will have a P scale of four, which is our amp. And so it will have a radius of four and it will keep incrementing. So what we can do from here is let's go back to our amp and let's fit this amp attribute. So I will say that at amp equals fit and I will fit this amp from zero to CH max and fit this from zero to one. And let's create the channels and set the maximum value to maybe 10. So now this amp attribute will keep incrementing from zero to all the way over to frame 10 and then it stops at frame 10. So now this sort of clamps it at this maximum uh, range that we give it. Furthermore, we can drop this entire fit into a ramp. So here I will type ch ramp and let's maybe just rename this to ramp and Let's create this ramp. And now we can create a graph here that sort of mimics the graph that we had for our two keyframes earlier. So I'll just create a point here and I wanna grab these handles and I will set the interpolation to B spline. And I'm, I'm just trying to sort of mimic that fast appearance and then a slow settle. So now if I preview this, we have an animation that's close to our original one that we did with the keyframes. Only using this method, we are not using any keyframes and we can, we can pretty much determine the duration of this animation if I increase this max value. So for example, let's say that maybe the whole animation I want to last up until frame 25. If I set this now to 25 and go back, now we slow this down over a duration of 25. And we can adjust this P scale value if I go to my amp and I will multiply this with, let's maybe create a channel here that's called multiplier and let's set this to a value of five. All right, so now over a period of 25 frames, this will animate its P scale from zero to five. And it will also have this smooth and sharp transition from fast to slow. So now what we can do is we can use this amp attribute to affect multiple parameters of this box without having to worry about any keyframes. So from here, if I drop down an attribute VOP, let's step inside and let's bind import the amp. And from this amp, let's create a vector. So let's drop down a float to vector and let's add this to the P. So I will press add and 
let's plug this into the P. So now we also push it into the X direction, five units. And let's maybe plug this amp instead into the Y value and also drop down a multiply constant here and maybe increase this value a little bit. So maybe multiply this by 10. So now we should have, so now if I play the animation, we can see that it scales up and it also flies upward 10 units. And again, this is using the amp attribute, so we can always go back and we can make some changes over here. So maybe I want to make this animation a little faster. I'll drop down this to a value of 15 and maybe we want to make this linear or more linear and we can see how this works. Let's maybe keep this uh, as a sharp curve. So this is pretty much how we are going to create the main lining in the center in the next lesson. And for the lining that spreads throughout the surface, instead of creating this amp attribute from the frame, we will instead use the age. But we will see this when we get there. So let's start creating our lining now.